welcome everyone to this week's Citizens Climate University. It's a weekly webinar program on Citizens Climate Lobbies that provides CCL supporters like you and I with access to in-depth training opportunities on topics related to climate change and effective climate advocacy. I'm your host, Brett Cease, and tonight's topic is asking community leaders to champion their support to Congress. We know that Congress is in the process of negotiating the budget reconciliation package and getting carbon pricing in the budget and then keeping it in is CCL's main focus. So since local leaders have extra clout with your member of Congress, tonight we're gonna focus on asking your community leaders, both endorsers and non-endorsers, to personally call their members of Congress and identify themselves as a community leader when they call. We'll have the chance to review how to do that just in a bit, but first let me introduce our esteemed speaker for tonight's training. Todd Elvins started as a CCL volunteer in 2012 and joined the staff in 2017. Todd now serves as CCL's National Actions Director and surfs with the Dawn Patrol in San Diego. Thank you so much for joining us today, Todd. And if we've done our job well, you're gonna walk away with the following three learning goals from tonight's training. You're gonna understand why now is the time to ask your community leaders to champion their support, you're going to understand who to ask in your community to speak up in supporting a price on carbon in this year's climate package. And we'll also review what to give to your community leader on how and what to say in their outreach to Congress. So our agenda is really straightforward. We're going to review why now, which community leaders, how they should contact their member of Congress, what they should say, and what else to highlight in their support before hearing from some wonderful local examples. And with that, I will pass it to you, Todd, to take it away. All right, thanks, Brett. So I'm gonna start with a story and I'll tell you up front that the moral of the story is that you probably know more community leaders than you think you do. So as Brett said, I surf every morning with the Dawn Patrol. And while we were waiting for waves, one of my surf buddies asked, hey, is there any news on that climate stuff that you do? And I told them that we were running a Senate campaign to get constituents to call their members of Congress. And so my buddy says, so, you know, I'm a partner in my law firm. Do you think that my call would have any clout? And I said, of course it would. And if you call your senators, you can have the next wave. So business leaders like my surf buddy are terrific community leaders and have extra clout with Congress. So let's jump in. Why are community leaders important now, today, and why and which community leaders should you ask? So we're going to explore these two questions in the section just ahead. The Biden administration committed to reduce emissions 50% by 2030. That's ambitious. And Congress is working to help the president achieve that goal. This is the first chance Congress has had to enact aggressive climate legislation in a decade. While budget reconciliation works its way through Congress, our focus is ensuring that carbon pricing is included and stays included. And you can help to increase your member of Congress's support or reduce their opposition for carbon pricing by having your community leader contact their members of Congress. Community leaders often create jobs and economic activity in the district, so their voice carries extra weight. Your outreach will help to keep carbon pricing in the minds of members of Congress amidst all the other things that they have to pay attention to. Up until recently, our grass tops work was 100% focused on getting people who've endorsed climate policies in the past to personally call Congress to show their support for carbon pricing. At this point, volunteers have re-engaged many or most of our endorsers already. And so we've expanded our scope of our grass tops work to ask all community leaders, whether they've endorsed or not, to personally call Congress, especially community leaders who are concerned about climate change or know members of Congress personally, which many of them do because they move in the same circles, or community leaders who will impress their members of Congress. Community leaders fall into two categories, the ones you know and the ones you don't know. I recommend the former. You'll have 100 times more success contacting community leaders you already know or you can reach through your network. So you might be curious which types of community leaders will be extra persuasive to members of Congress. We recommend locally elected officials 
those, uh, which includes state legislators, county commissioners, and city council members. Local elected officials are especially persuasive because they represent thousands of constituents and are responsible for protecting their jurisdiction from the impact of climate change. Your local business owners and company executives are also great community leaders and persuasive to Congress, especially large local employers because they create jobs and economic activity in the district and state. Your local faith leaders are persuasive because they represent large numbers of congregants and most members of Congress belong to a faith group. And your local economists are persuasive trusted messengers because they can explain why carbon pricing is the cheapest, fastest, simplest, fairest, most effective, and most transparent first step in addressing climate change. To help make your job easier, we wanted to provide an example to support your outreach. On the training page that corresponds to this video, which is called Asking Community Leaders to Champion Their Support to Congress, there's a link to a Google Doc that has an example script and a follow-up email that you can use in your outreach to the community leaders you know, whether they've endorsed in the past or not. And I want to be sure to thank uh, CCL Oregon State Coordinators Jerry Porter and Danella Broad for creating the scripts. All right, in the next section, let's cover what actions you can encourage your community leaders to take to state their support. The best way for a community leader to connect with their member of Congress is on the phone. They can either call their congressional switchboard at 202-224-3121 and ask to speak to a congressional office, or they can go to house.gov or senate.gov to get the direct dial phone number and then call the congressional office directly. During the call, your community leader should be sure to start by identifying their role in the community. So here's an example. And this is an example for members of Congress who are Democrats. Oh, hello, I'm a business owner and a constituent, and I'm calling to urge you to support and advocate for carbon price in the reconciliation package. So here's an example from a community leader calling a member of Congress who's a Republican. Oh, hi, I'm a faith leader and a constituent, and I'm calling to urge you to enact a federal carbon price to protect US businesses from the EU's border tariff. And one more example, another script option for Republican House representatives is to ask them to support the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Also, Working with other volunteers, see if you can organize your community leaders so that members of Congress receive between three and five calls per week to keep carbon pricing fresh in their minds. After calling their members of Congress, please encourage your community leaders to continue to show support. They can, for example, post their support on their own social media, tagging their members of Congress and the hashtag pound sign price on carbon, they could write an op-ed or co-write an op-ed with you or your chapter and submit it to one or more traditional or online newspapers. They could write a personal or an open letter to their members of Congress. Uh, and they can get five colleagues to do the same. So please be sure to log these action, whatever actions your community leaders take in the CCL action tracker on community as they happen. So here are some ways that you can highlight your community leader's support to inspire others to show their support. You can write a post on your chapter's forum on community and in other CCL community forums like the site-wide forums. You can post it on your own social media tagging your community leaders and your members of Congress if appropriate, including the hashtag pound sign price on carbon. You could write a letter to the editor that cites Climate related pro, uh, a climate-related problem in the news and your community leader's support for carbon pricing as a first step in solving the problem. Next up, let's hear from a couple of volunteers who have successfully engaged community leaders to personally show their support to Congress. We'll start with Robin Peone, who is a state coordinator and a group leader in Montana who re-engaged with a local environmental organization. 
Yes, I'm Robin Paoni and I'm in Whitefish, Montana. Um, so yeah, I'd like to highlight first, um, there's a few things I wanna do. I wanna highlight some successes and talk about how we got our volunteers engaged and then actually just go over like the super basics of how simple it is to do. So um, first, a couple of successes. Uh, so I, I, I reached out to one of my endorsers who's an owner of an environmental services consulting firm and so I emailed and then left a, fo a follow-up call, a voicemail friendly um, note. Anyway, he wrote me back after completing the action to contact um, our senators. We were running the Senate campaign and uh, he had a lengthy email about how uh, important this was. And, um, you know, of course I agree. <laughs> and um, so what, what I learned about this is now I, I know a little more about him and um, I feel like I can ask him to participate in other future actions such as maybe on a lobby team or um, helping me uh, gain some more endorsements. So that was pretty awesome. Um, a second example is um, we have an active volunteer in Bozeman and Reddy. And Anne uh, won the endorsement of Montana Trout Unlimited last year. So what she did though, uh, for this drive, she first called. So she called prior to emailing her contact with Montana Trout Unlimited. And it turned out, um, they let her know that they um, had a uh, government affairs staff meeting with our Montana senators planned. And so, uh, uh, she followed up with a detailed email about talking points on the European Union's border carbon tariff and other things. And uh, he got back to her and said that carbon pricing was on their agenda uh, to speak with the senators about. So pretty cool. Um, anyway, these examples just show how a simple push or an ask of your endorsers can lead to more than just the action, but further um, what can I say? It leverages our message. Okay, so now I'd like to just uh, talk a little bit about how uh, we engaged our volunteers to help. So um, what we did is we just, uh, uh, my co-leader and I, we created a Google Docs spreadsheet, which listed all of our endorsers for our state. And it had the delegates for those endorsers, which are our CCL volunteers. And some of our uh, uh, endorsers don't have delegates, um, but we still listed them. And then we sent out sample emails they could use for contacting their endorsers. So um, Anne Reddy, she got started before I even did, did this, but we had to get the ball rolling with the other our other volunteers. So we just uh, emailed them and followed up with them with a phone call if we didn't hear back from them. So um, my co-leader, Angie, she stepped up and contacted all the endorsers that did not have a delegate. And then it just took some gentle prodding and we got all of them, all of our endorsers have now been contacted. So just, um, you know, don't be afraid to uh, ask your volunteers for some help. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention is the actual mechanics of just contacting your endorser. So, um, you know, email or request letter, there's a lot of examples out there. And then I recommend after you email, then give them a call right away. Tell them, look in your inbox, um, tell them a little bit about what it, what it is. In my case, I, I left voicemails. I never reached a live person, <laughs> but I know they're all super busy. Um, and then about a week later, if you don't hear back from them, send another email and a phone call. So that's all I wanted to say. It's super simple and it's a way to get your chapter more involved uh, in, an, in meaningful action. Okay, great. Thanks, Robin. Now I'll hear from Mark Welsh, a group leader in Omaha, Nebraska, who emailed and called all of his endorsers to get them to personally show their support for carbon pricing. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about how how to get people to endorse, how easy it is once you get them to endorse to get them to take that next step and you can get involved with your your group and our effort by 
picking up the phone and calling elected officials or what we're doing now is just saying, hey, just go to this website and click on it to send an email. Couldn't be easier, really. So to, to get people to endorse, you just have to ask them. Uh, even if you don't know them really well, uh, I've called professors that I knew in, in the local colleges, uh, a yoga student that I hadn't, I was in that yoga class 20 plus years ago, hadn't really talked to him too much, but I knew he was a, a very well respected business owner. He owned uh, and ran the oldest locally owned grocery store here in Omaha. And uh, my pastor, well respected man. So I just picked up the phone, I called them, I made an appointment to talk with some of them. Some of them, some of the professors, uh, I knew a little better than the others. And just talking to them on the phone, they said, oh, that sounds great, Mark, where do I sign? And I said, well, let me do it for you. And just to make sure that the form did get filled out, because I've had the experience of not, of people saying, yeah, I'll, I'll endorse it, but then they never do. So I just do it for them. And I go to the, that website, I fill out the form for them, asking them, you know, what letters do you want me to put after your name? What degrees do you have? Uh, that sort of thing. How do you spell your business? So that it just makes it super, super easy for them to do. Uh, and, and Mike, the business owner of the grocery store, uh, actually met with him and to explain what we were doing, because he didn't know as much about climate change as the rest, but he was concerned about it. And we didn't get, uh, I went with another CCL volunteer. We didn't get halfway done with our presentation. And he said, that sounds great to me, where do I sign? And he wouldn't even let us finish. So it's, it's really exciting how much people want to help with what we're doing. And, um, and then with the others that I've got signed up before, uh, I just made a list of all of them, their names, their emails, their phone numbers. Uh, and then I sent a bulk email one time, another time I sent individual emails to each and every one of them. It's a little more time consuming. Uh, and I don't know which way worked any better than the other. So I'm probably just gonna do, send it to me and then blind copies to everybody else. And then I follow up with phone calls. I don't wait any amount of time. I wait maybe 10 minutes and start making those phone calls just to say, hey, I sent you an email. Please don't let it get too far down. But sometimes I'd say 30% of the time, maybe I get them on the phone and talk with them about it. And uh, except in one case, uh, they said, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do it right now. So. It's really exciting to talk to some people um, about this thing. And some endorsers I've known for years and we get into long conversations. It takes us a half an hour to sort of catch up. And, and that's exciting too, because in this day of COVID, you don't get to see your friends like you used to. So uh, just talking to people that you haven't talked to for a while. It's fun and exciting and it's effective. That's the most important thing, I guess, for us right now is it's effective when we get those endorsers to contact our members of Congress. Uh, they know they're influential. They know they have people following them. And so it just gives us a better, uh, a better presentation, I guess, or uh, at, at the Senate and House levels. When I've gone through everybody once, it's a lot easier to get them to say yes the second time through. So you know, the first time with the Senate took a little more time, the House less time, and, and now I've just started with the White House. So it's easier once they've said yes once. OK, Thank, uh, thanks a lot. Back to you, Brett. All oh, right. Thank you so much, Todd. Thank you to Mark and to Robin and to all of the wonderful presenters. I did want to put a quick shout out as well. There is an earlier version of the recording. If you go to our training page on CCL Community that featured the amazing work that uh, Bruce Jameson, Steffi Rausch, Andy Pinelli, Lauren Barros, and Tom Moyer have also done in building their community leaders to champion support for Congress. And feel free to check out all of that. It's available here. If you go to the link 
on this slide to our CCL community training page for this topic, asking community leaders to champion their support to Congress. You're also welcome to email any of your questions about endorsements to our simple forwarder endorse at citizensclimate.org. And as always, you can post in CCL communities forums with any other questions or to share your successes. We'd love to hear what's working well from you, what advice you might have for other volunteers as you are engaged in grass tops outreach in your own community. Thank you all so much for making it tonight. It's great to see you. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.